G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about why you shouldn't ice an injury. Um, now this is often a, a controversial topic, um, but it, it doesn't have to be. Once we sort of talk about the, <clears throat> the physiology behind what happens when you heal and what needs to happen when you heal, and when we compare that to what ice does, and, and our thinking around the use of ice, hopefully it'll make perfect sense sort of by the end of this video. So, uh, so before we get into that, um, if you go on to like the video, um, please consider leaving a like below. Um, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It really helps us out in the long term and it helps these videos and these ideas reach more people. So, uh, so with that being said, the, the best place to start with this debate on sort of whether we need to use ice or not to treat acute injuries um, is the, the best place to start is basically why we do that. Um, and I think if you were to take a moment to think about why you ice an injury, I think the, the, the main reasons why most people tend to do that, there's three of them. We generally do it for pain relief. We do it to stop swelling and inflammation. And those three things often top the list of reasons why people uh, ice their injuries. Um, and probably if you could add a fourth one in, it's probably because we've, we've always done it. So we, we tend to want to keep doing it because we've done it for a long time. So. Um, and those ideas on the surface make sense and, and that's why they've, they've hung around for the best part of 50 years since the, the introduction of the, the rest ice compression protocols. Um, the, they've really persisted, it's really persisted for a couple of good reasons and so with the first reason we, we ice for pain relief because it works. Um, you put an ice pack on an injured area and it does help numb the pain. Um, when you talk about inflammation and swelling, ice is sort of seen as being something that can control and prevent those things from occurring. And in some, uh, in some ways it does, it has an effect on those things. But the important thing that we need to discuss when we're talking about why you shouldn't ice an injury, at least anymore, is we're sort of finding that the reasons why we've done it to prevent pain, swelling and inflammation they're different to what actually has to happen in order to heal. So we know that any time that you hurt yourself, every single time, you, you have an inflammatory response. And if you look at any medical textbook, any textbook on, on the physiology of healing, it's pretty well understood now that you need to undergo some form of inflammatory process where the damaged tissue, the cells come in to clean that up, clear it out, and to start to repair that you have to enter the, the healing tunnel in at that initial inflamed, swollen stage in order to come out the other side with in, uh, in that healing stage. So you can't sort of um, hack that, you can't come in at any angle, you have to start that process in that healing, that healing process at the inflamed stage. You have to go through that process to come out the other side and, and be in that healing process. You can't have one without the other. So you can't have the healing process without the inflammatory process first. So the way that we've looked at icing to prevent inflammation and prevent swelling is a little bit misguided because those things are normal and they have to happen to heal. But yet for, again, the best part of 40 to 50 years, we've always tried to uh, ice the inflammation and swelling to stop those processes in order to try and speed up the healing process. And for some strange reason, that idea has persisted despite the fact that we need inflammation to heal. The second part of that is we look at pain, swelling and inflammation as bad things when, as we said just a second ago, they're normal. Um, pain is a normal part of your nervous system and brain's response to a threat. In the context of acute injury and damaged tissue, pain serves a really valuable purpose to give us boundaries. It gives us the rules with, with which we can work within to make sure that we're not doing too much or too little to aggravate, that, to aggravate that injury. So if we ice for pain relief and we knock out that pain signal, very similar to taking a, you know, pain medication or anti-inflammatories in a sense where that pain signal drops down, we don't get that same input, the quality of the same input that tells us what we can or can't do. So we, lo we lose that ability to know whether we're doing too much or too little. And if we're trying to speed up the healing process, which at the end of the day is the reason why we ice, we only ice because we've, we feel like it speeds everything up. If we're trying to speed up that process, we need to know what we can and can't do. So icing for pain relief, although it's very effective at decreasing pain, we don't necessarily want to decrease your pain 
blindly so that it, so you stop getting those signals as to what you can and can't do. What we what we do want to do instead, and we'll um, we'll do a video following this that'll come out tomorrow that will cover some alternatives to ice. So what you should do instead of ice, um, and this will feed into that where there's things you can do, more natural pain relieving things. Um, and in this context, a lot of what we need to do is we want pain free movement. So if you feel like walking normally hurts, then if you walk more slowly and more tentatively and that doesn't hurt, then we need to make sure you're working within that safe window so you're not exacerbating that pain. And as I said, there's other more natural pain relieving techniques that respect the body's physiology as, as opposed to trying to sort of go against what your body's trying to do. So, so from a pain perspective, ice is a great pain reliever, but we need to ask that question of, well, do we actually want to relieve pain in the first place? And for a lot of the time, we don't need to because the pain is intrinsically linked to the inflammatory and the swelling sort of processes that happen in the body. So optimizing those processes tends to help reduce that pain more effectively. So, so in terms of using ice to, to treat pain, um, it can be a little bit misguided, particularly when we know the, the side effects, if you will, of what ice does to inflammation and swelling. So again, we look at inflammation as a bad thing, but essentially it is a good thing. It's, or even if it's not a good thing, it's definitely not a bad thing. It's just a thing. It's a thing that happens every time you hurt yourself. So trying to ice to prevent that or to stop that, it's gonna have some consequences to how quickly we can enter into that healing phase. And what I like to say to my patients is, icing um, an acute injury is essentially putting pause on that healing process. Because what happens is, uh, when you hurt yourself, blood rushes to that area. It has all the important cells that we need for the, the cleanup and the, the waste disposal and all the healing factors that come in and that process, that inflammatory process that happens, comes in via the bloodstream. And we know that when you ice tissue, it reduces blood flow. It creates that vasoconstriction and the blood just doesn't get to that area. And we've looked at that as a noble thing to do because it stops that inflammatory process or prevents or slows down that inflammatory process. But we don't realize that, or we forget that we need that inflammatory process. We need the blood flow to get in there so all these things can happen so that we can then transfer quickly to that healing phase. So, so icing for inflammation, what it does is it reduces the blood flow to the area. And then as soon as you take the ice pack off again and the tissue reheats again, the whole process just kicks back into gear. So we haven't stopped anything. We're really just delaying the inevitable and delaying something that should be happening from happening. So, so from that perspective, we, we don't want to prevent pain just to prevent pain. We don't want to stop the inflammatory process because it's the thing that gets us to where we want to be in that healing process, that healing phase. And the third thing is when we look, the third thing is when we look at swelling, again, we look at swelling as bad. We say, look, you've got too much swelling or there's this swelling there without really knowing what too much swelling is. And because we look at it as a bad thing and we demonize it, we sort of are figuring out all these ways to try and stop it from happening. When in actual fact, all swelling is, is just the accumulation of waste at the end of the inflammatory cycle. So, and again, it's not a good or a bad thing. It's just the thing that happens as part of the natural order of the inflammatory process. So, so the problem with swelling is not that it's there, it's that we're not getting rid of it fast enough. So again, we talked about pain-free movement as the thing to help guide us um, in those initial stages. Movement is key to remove swelling. We know that the lymphatic system, it's this passive waste disposal system that the body has it requires muscular contraction, muscle pump, to flush that sort of swelling out of the area. So the, the old school idea, or the idea of rest, ice, compression, elevation, all four of those ideas pretty much go against what we need to happen for the body to, to heal more quickly. And in the, in the case of uh, swelling, rest doesn't get you to use those muscles effectively. So it's easier to accumulate waste at the end of that inflammatory cycle. So effectively, a lack of movement, a lack of respectable, whatever that sort of window is for you, that respectful pain-free movement, a lack of that allows that swelling to, to increase or to, to pull, essentially. So um, one of the things that's interesting about icing is that if you think of, um, if you have like a, 
a squeezy a yogurt tube, those kids' tubes of yogurt, if you think of that as swelling, and you put that in the freezer, that yogurt, that sort of, that viscous liquid um, hardens. So your ability to get it out of that tube, or even if you do the same thing with toothpaste, the ability to get it out of that tube once it's colder and, and more frozen is harder. So if you can imagine icing congestion can thicken up that congestion and make it harder to pump out. But not only that, there is some, some research potentially out there that suggests that when you ice the lymphatic system, it becomes more porous and it dumps that swelling back into the system. So not only may icing um, knock out the signals that we need to tell us what we can and can't do via pain, it may also delay the inflammatory response from doing what it's supposed to do, but it may also increase swelling and make it harder to get rid of just because of how it, how it reacts to that cold. So, so the amazing thing about this conversation is the whole reason why we ice an injured tissue is to help speed up this process. But in actual fact, we may actually be delaying what should be happening. And clinically what I find myself is that's, that tends to be the case. So if we look at a sprained ankle, traditionally we'll get someone to ice for you know, 24, 48, 72 hours, put your foot up, wrap it up, um, all those protocols that we know so well through the RICE protocol. And that may take you know, a week or a little bit longer than a week to sort of turn around and get you moving with some massage and all these sorts of things to get you to feel better. But again, we'll cover this in the next video in more detail, but if you can get someone to avoid the pain relief if they can, again, you don't have to be a hero, if you can't sleep, if it's stopping you from living your life, doing things that are really important, then you have to make a judgment call that perhaps some pain relief is necessary but you need to do so in the knowledge that there may be some negative consequences in terms of the speed of the healing process. But if we're adults making adult decisions, you can balance that out um, you know, and, and get the, the result that you desire the most. But the important thing is, is that our ability to, to use ice to speed up this process is potentially delaying it. And in terms of that sprained ankle, as we spoke about before, if it's a week or a week and a half, a 10 day turnaround to get someone from injured to being relatively normal with the RICE protocol, if we start to respect the body's physiology as opposed to trying to tell it what to do so much, we can potentially turn that sprained ankle around in two or three days, four days potentially, because not only are we traditionally do we seem to get in the way of the healing process, but we may actually be delaying it further. And that that conversation has become unnormal. So that's what we base our reference of how long something should happen or how long something should take to heal. But when we sort of take a step back and look at things a little bit differently in a way that respects the body's physiology, we can actually see that we can define a new normal of how fast you should take or how long it should take for you to, to heal and get back to your pre-injury activity. So as I said, the there's a little bit of controversy around this topic um, of conversation, not necessarily because people are coming out and, and someone promotes an idea and it's, it's different and um, you know, they just go hell for leather on that idea without actually having some science behind it. But it's more, of a, it's more controversial because icing is something that we've done for so long and we just assume that it's correct and it's normal. But the interesting thing is that um, 40, 50 years ago, um, a, a famous man now by the name of Dr. Gabe Merkin, uh, he was the one who coined the, the RICE acronym, the Rest Ice Compression Elevation. Uh, he, he had, it was in his sort of sports medicine book. Really, really popular. It's a foundational concept. Um, and we can go into that in more detail. And I'll leave a link to the description in the description to an article that I've written um, on this very topic. It goes into this in a lot more detail. But... The, to cut a long story short, um, this very um, important figure in the icing debate sort of always invented the use of ice for good reason uh, at the time. Uh, and it's become the most sort of widely used, widely recognized protocol, medical protocol in the world. This same man came out three or four years ago uh, on his own website and he said that he got it wrong. And he said that icing and the things that we use ice for um, are incorrect and that there are better ways to facilitate what we're trying to do without using ice and 
I'll, again, I'll leave a link in the description to his article as well. It's a really good read. But the important thing is, is that the man who sort of drove us down the path of icing in the first place is actually now saying, look, let's, let's move into something else. Let's do something else that respects the body's physiology a little bit more. So, so I just wanted to put a, a bit of a video together on that topic, um, just to say that the, the reasons why we ice make perfect sense. But when you take a step back and look at what the body needs to happen to heal the fastest, if you take those two ideas, which are both pretty well understood at the moment, and you put them together, they don't fit. They're no longer, it's no longer a, a valid way to treat an injury by icing it. Um, and as I said, we'll put a video out tomorrow with a number of ways that you can speed up the healing process, a number of exercises and techniques that help that don't require ice. And even if this conversation didn't exist, if there wasn't a little bit of controversy around whether you should ice or not, even if you just paired icing up and looked at how quickly that helped you heal, and then you paired it up against these other techniques, these techniques would work better anyway. And I guess the purposes of this video is just to say, well, look, there's a very good reason for why you'll hopefully find that these techniques will work better anyway. So, so if you'd like to hang around and come back tomorrow, we'll go through those. Um, but I just wanted to put that out there because it's something that in the physical therapy community, the physiotherapy community, the medical community as a whole, it's still such an ingrained part of what we do. Uh, you see someone injure themselves, the first thing they do is reach for an ice pack. It's slowly changing, but hopefully if you can understand the logic between why you've always iced and why we should probably move away from ice uh, to facilitate the faster healing response, then hopefully you don't necessarily need to trust anyone. It'll make, it'll make perfect sense. Um, and I can sort of say from experience as a physical therapist, I haven't asked a patient to ice for probably seven, eight, nine years now. Um, and the results are far superior than if I was icing. Um, so if you do reach for that ice pack, again, it's not unsafe to do so it's probably no longer the most effective way to get you from where you are to where you want to be. So, um, so again, like any of these videos, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. You know, If you feel like you're not sure about the logic behind this, then let me know below. I'm more than happy to talk you through it. Um, but as I said, keep an eye out for the video tomorrow. We'll talk about what you should do instead. Um, but until then, we'll see you soon.